Today we are using up our crumbs and scraps from previous quilts and I will show you how to make my crumble weave pattern. Now this pattern will be available as a free PDF in a 50 by 60 inch throw size, but feel free to expand on this project if you would like a bigger or smaller quilt, but let's go ahead and get started. Now I like to store my scraps in a container. This container holds scraps from a single collection and I'm going to try and make the biggest quilt possible that I can make from just all of these scraps. So to start, I will use my leftover trimmings from a fat quarter pattern. Now normally this would be enough fabric for a scrappy binding, but today I'm going to chop it up into smaller pieces just to show you that no matter what the size of your scraps or crumbs are, this pattern will work well with anything. But if you do have large scrap pieces like I do, and you still want to make a crumb quilt, just go ahead and take your rotary cutter and start slicing it up into random sizes. Now you can just wing it or use a rotary cutter and ruler to just make random cuts. Now the larger your pieces are, the quicker it will be to build your blocks, and of course the smaller your pieces are, it will take more time, but your block will come out more of a fractical-like pattern, which is mostly what you see in typical crumb size quilts. Then for your background, you will cut two and a half inch strips, and then subcut them into four two and a half inch by ten and a half inch rectangles. Now within the free PDF pattern, which I will have linked down below in the description, I'll inform you how much yardage you will need for a 50 inch by 60 inch quilt size. But two extra tips are if you honestly don't know how many box blocks you will be able to yield from your crumbs, the best practice is to make sure you are using a background fabric that you can repurchase later on if you want to keep expanding your quilt. And second, make one quilt block and then try to estimate how much of it depleted from your scraps. If it took, as an example, a quarter or a fifth, then you might only end up with a table runner or like a baby size quilt. Now, if it looks like you didn't even put a dent in your scrap pile, then you should be able to yield a larger quilt size. But moving forward, you will need printer paper or foundation paper. Either way will work just as long as you can cut two and three quarter inch strips by 11 inches. Now if you use printer paper, you should yield three strips per each page. And for your final strip, you won't need it to be 100% by the two and three quarters width but it will save a little bit on fabric, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it exactly like so. Lastly, if you are familiar with paper piecing, you might already have this tool, which is just a seam roller. Now this isn't required, but it is helpful if you plan on making several quilt blocks. But anyways, let's go ahead and finally get started. So first you are going to take your paper strip and two random pieces of scrap fabric. My first scrap happens to be a triangle, which will make a perfect start as it has a right 90 degree angle, which will cover a corner. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is the fabric must expand past your paper piece, but it doesn't have to be a lot, but it does need to extend. For my second piece, I'm going to lay it right side together on the diagonal. Now one thing you can keep in mind is after you sew it, you will want it to cover up your strip width to make it easier on yourself. But if it doesn't completely cover it, you will just add another piece later on, which I will show you later, but for now I'm going to show you an easier method. With that said, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And since we are using paper to stabilize our pieces, you will want to drop your stitch length to a shorter length. Now this is a personal preference, but I like using a two to a two and a quarter on my sewing machine, where I normally sew at a two and a half. Now those numbers can be 
it's so much different on other sewing machines. So this is something you may need to look up for your specific machine. But either way, just drop your stitch length down and this will make it easier to remove the paper from your crumb strip. Now, after you have sewn those pieces together, do not iron it. You are going to finger press the seam open or you can use that seam roller. Then you are going to take another scrap and if you look closely, you will see that my strip didn't quite cover all the way to the end. So with our third scrap, we are going to have to angle it a bit just to make sure it covers up that section. Now, if I were to press this open, you would notice that all of my angles will keep going in the same direction. Now, this is where you can get creative. So instead of just following those edges, you can randomly slap your next piece kind of anywhere, just as long as it covers up that section. So I'm going to sew that together with a quarter inch seam. Then afterwards, once again, do not iron it, finger press the seam or roll it. Now, since there is extra fabric, you can go ahead and cut it off with fabric scissors. That way you don't end up with bulky areas, but make sure that you have at least a quarter inch seam allowance from your stitches. Now you can just continue like so until you have sewn enough for your entire paper piece, but let's say we have a smaller crumb or some really odd shapes. Now here is how you can go about that. I'm going to cut just a small section off to create a weird angle that you might come across. Now how to handle that is you'll want to find a smaller crumb piece and sew it on that weird angle. That way you'll be able to cover the top of that strip. In this example, you'll want to make sure that you have your top and bottom pieces covered before you add on to the length to the right side. Otherwise, you might end up with a section that appears like a hole and it can cause some headaches or issues later on. Then as one more example, that small triangle piece that I had cut off, I could actually place it on this side to create an interesting block pattern within that same print, or I can grab another piece and work my way down. Now, it looks like this piece will not work, so let me go ahead and grab a different piece. Now, you just want to make sure that when you get some of these weird angles like I have here, you may want to mimic folding it over just to make sure that you will cover up that small triangle in this example. Then all you're going to do is repeat all of these steps until the entire paper is covered with as many scraps as possible. Now at this time, you can go ahead and iron it and then afterwards we are going to trim off the excess fabric all around the paper. Now doing so, you might end up with more crumbs, so go ahead and save those as well. And you might be tempted to remove the paper backing at this time, but I recommend not doing so until you have enough to complete a block at a minimum. That way you can just build blocks as you go, or you can just focus on making as many crumble strips before moving on to the next step. But once you have two strips completed, you will now trim them down to a two and a half inch by 10 and a half inch strip. Now one thing to keep in mind is if you have smaller pieces on the edges, you might want to trim them off or make sure you have at least a piece that is larger than a quarter inch on your edge. But once your strips are squared off, you can now pull the paper backing off. And if you are using foundation paper, this part will be so much easier. But if you are using paper like I did, you can see that it is a bit of a struggle. And this is why you want to make your stitch length smaller. It will then become easier to tear at this time. Now, one thing I like to do is I'll normally make a bunch of crumb strips and then place them in a container. And then I'll pop on a movie and then just sit there and start tearing all those pieces off. Now, another tip is if you use a mist spray bottle, you can just lightly spray the paper and wait a few seconds for the paper to soak in the water and it will rip so much easier. Which sadly, I did forget to hit record on that, but trust me, the paper will just like melt away and fall apart. And here is what my two strips look like with the paper removed. If you have sections that are just being a pain, 
Do not stress over it too much. If it is small, when you wash your quilt, it will eventually dissolve. So don't stress over this. Now at this time, if you have weird seams on the back, just cut the excess off so you don't have that much bulk. Then what you're going to do is take three background two and a half inch by 10 and a half inch strips and place them like so. Now the easy part, you'll just sew them together to complete your quilt block. And one thing to look out for is when you're sewing, go slow so you don't bunch up with all those seam allowances. And for the last tip, if you have a ton of tiny crumbs within your strip set, you may want to wait until you have completed sewing your block all together with the background fabric to help stabilize those crumbs a little bit more. Then afterwards, you can then remove the paper if you prefer. But once you've sewn everything together, your block is done. So you'll just repeat these steps until you have used up enough scraps for a 50 by 60 inch quilt, which I will have that free PDF pattern linked down below in the description. Also, like I said, feel free to expand on this quilt. My goal is to actually make a king size quilt from all these scraps, which is going to take me a very long time to complete. And this is why I don't have a finished quilt for you all yet. I like to piece a few blocks at a time, but I keep getting so many comments about crumb and scrap quilts since I always tell you guys to save those scraps. Do not throw anything away. But if you could, please hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can be notified for your next amazing quilt project.